Welcome back everybody. Wanted to do a quick little run through today about the Greeble pack. I have added a new Z script to make it a whole lot easier to create your normals, curves, diffuse, AO, depth. And it's basically one single click and it'll do everything for you. And so let's go ahead and jump into ZBrush and I will show you how it works. Uh, first, why don't we show you where to install it? How about that? So let's go real quick. If you haven't received an update from Gumroad, it's on there. It's got a new folder in there. It's a zip file, real small. And all you have to do is go to to install it. Just go to real quick, find it, and go to install the Greeble folder into your macros which is under your startup under ZBrush 4R7 Pixelogic uh, for me it's uh, program files x86 uh, may differ between your system uh, obviously Mac is going to be just slightly different I'm not sure the location but I'm sure you Mac guys know exactly where to find it all you have to do is drop it in there and it does have a little installation guide and then Greeble Texture Passes is the actual Z script. And I did leave the text format in there so you can modify it. And I will explain that later after we go over the demo here. So now that that's all installed, if you actually go into your macros now and load it up and then open up the sub palette macros. Let me just throw him over to the side here. Now you can see it's got a folder for Greeble and then Greeble Texture Passes. And then the miscellaneous is the what came with ZBrush. So we, we can just ignore them. All we're concentrating on is that one button right there. So go ahead and open up your texture generator. And which is Greeble Generator. So we're going to go ahead and whip up a quick uh, Greeble real fast here, and I'm going to show you what it does. All right, so we're back at our initial startup here. So let me go to the tech panels real quick. We will open up NanoMesh and do a quick random seed on him. See, I may another one here. So I may scale him down just a little bit so we can see some of the stuff in the background there. All right, let me go to miscellaneous here. Let me randomize them just a little bit. Let's go ahead, instead of having a grid in the background, we can load up the Hex Pro. Open up our NanoMesh again. And let's see, let's go to, oops, go over to Hex here. Put him on the first one. And we'll random seed him just a little bit. And I think that's going to work for me. So go ahead and we'll open up our, we've got our macros open up here. And it's just a matter of click. That's it. It's going to start running through the process. Uh, it may vary a little bit. It takes a couple minutes for some people. For me, it takes about four or five minutes uh, to run the whole process. It does have to go through every single uh, index or every single uh, greeble in there. As you can see, it's going through all the indexes right now. And what it's basically doing is changing the mesh material under the color eyes. So this way it can respond better to uh, any materials I add to it. So it's got to go through all, every single one and fix it. But don't worry, your texture will be just fine. It'll always snap back to the original subtool and the original indexes that it was on. So a great little tool here and once it goes through all of the 
nanomeshes, it will start the rendering process for your normals, curves, and then it will reset everything and go back and do all the other textures. So, so like I said, it just depends on your uh, system on how long it's really going to take. You know, as you can see, I'm still going. So we're getting towards the end of uh, the first part of the Z script. It's going through the medallions, which is the last on the subtool stack. So now it's uh, rendering out uh, your material ID, and then it's going to go through and do your normals. And then it will render out a curvature. And then now the Z script is going to reset everything, take all the indexes back to UI color. So this way you get those nice variations in color. If you want to, yeah, so if you want that nice, uh, you know, darker panel here and lighter panel here, you like that effect, it's going to reset it to where that still works. But it's got to go through all the indexes again. But like I said, it's going to remember exactly where it left off, so your texture is going to look just the same as when you, before you hit the Z script. So, you know, this would probably be a good time that you just uh, go grab a Coke, whatever, you know, have a smoke, whatever. <laughs> it, it, like I said, it's going to take a few minutes to run it, so, but the textures it generates in the end is just awesome. So we're getting towards the end of the script. It's almost got everything reset to do a few more texture, to render out a few more for you. Okay. Once you start seeing the medallions, you'll know that you're getting towards the end of the reset. And then it'll start. Uh, okay, now it's going to do just an albedo pass or diffuse pass where there's no shaded information. And then it'll reset and do the final render with uh, uh, basically doing a shaded pass which will tend to take the longest because it's got the ambient occlusion and all that built into it and then once that's done the Z script will finish off and then I will show you all the textures it generated for you Okay, now we're done. It has rendered out all the textures we need for to that. Yeah, so if you wanted to take it into uh, the Quexel suite or into Substance Designer or Painter, uh, these uh, textures are going to be perfect for you. So go into your texture panel, and as you can see, there are five new textures in here, all named Z Grab. But you've got your material ID, you got your uh, normal, you got your curvature, you got your albedo, you got your shaded pass. If it'll let me look at it, but it's basically what's on the screen here. And then you all you have to do is just uh, click on each one and click export on however you want here. So I'll just. So that's Mad ID. And that should be, let me save it as a TIFF. There we go. You know, you can save it as a JPEG, whatever you want to save it as. That's just the way I like to do it. And that's normals. Curves, curvature, however you want to do it. Click on him, export. Uh, this one is going to be the 
diffuse or albedo whatever terminology is the same thing and click on him export that's shaded I know in my previous tutorial I told you you can export uh, out of a render pass for the shaded don't do it it puts a one pixel black line around your whole image if you do it through your texture panel like I did or you do it as a document and export it will not put that black line so trust me don't ever do it out of here but your depth and your AO will do that will do just fine so TIFF and your AO for some reason it doesn't put the black line around it I, maybe one of these days they will fix that little uh, hiccup in there so let's go outside here and we will take a look at those textures alright get rid of him so there we go we now have our ambient occlusion we have our depth pass we have our curves we have our diffuse our mat ID normals and then a shaded texture that you can uh, take into Photoshop and make a cool background out of that's what I had that first background so this is all done in Photoshop using the a texture generated out of the generator so I mean you, there's more applications than just 3D with this stuff and then let's go ahead and take a look under the hood real quick I'm gonna go back to open him up here so we can take a look at him and open him up and here we go I know it might be a little hard to read uh, let's see but basically if you ever want to adjust this uh, this Z script there's a couple spots that you need to adjust so say like you added a subtool if you go to this one here it'll it'll actually have a note off to the side number of subtools to change it's going to be 10 because in the Greeple pack as it stands right now there's only 10 of those that you need to change the very top one you never need to change okay and always make sure that you keep let me go back up back up there we go keep that Greeple generator all the way up top or the Z script is going to have issues okay it's just a placeholder but don't ever get rid of them as I've told told you in previous in the previous video don't don't modify them don't do anything to them just keep them as is I wish I could figure out a way to lock them in place to where you can't mess with them so uh, so basically like I said if you ever add something to your um, you add a new thing of greebles or whatever all you have to do is come in here and modify this loop here it'd be 10 and then you come back down and there's another one down here another 10 this is to reset everything and I've got little notes in here to kind of give you an idea of what's going on and then uh, this other loop that's in here is the max number of indexes per subtool to change there's not actually 20 indexes in any of the subtools but I put 20 in there just to be on the safe side in case you guys added an extra index to anything so just modify that if it goes above 20 on any of them so and then the same thing down here so but that is basically it uh, I hope this makes it a lot easier for you to render everything out and definitely have fun with it you know it's a pretty awesome uh, plugin or uh, not really a plugin but a tool but now you've got a Z script there to make your life a whole lot easier and big thanks to Marcus on ZBrush Central for helping me out with uh, some tidbits of the code uh, he is like the Z script god so um, definitely uh, have fun with this uh, have fun greebling and we will catch you in the next video okay